Christopher Wray, director of the FBI, on October 31st met with the uh, Senate Committee for Homeland Security and Government Affairs. He gave out a report on all the different threats that are happening right now in the U.S. Uh, we're going to specifically talk about their priority, their number one potential threat, uh, and that is terrorism. Of course, in 2023, threats had doubled. Uh, in fact, there's over 2,700 current investigations going on in the U.S. and 4,000 worldwide. Uh, one of the things that he stated is that over the past few years, the threat of terrorism has really come to a low priority for the FBI. There just hasn't been as much activity. But even at the beginning of 2023, there was a large uptick. And this is even before the October 7th uh, Hamas invasion of southern Israel and the atrocities that happened there. So we're going to take a look at a number of different points uh, number one, we're going to look at the different type of threats that are coming. And there are three different specific type threats. Uh, number two, we're going to look at the different groups that pose these threats or that had made threats toward the U.S. And then we're going to look at the area where most of these groups target different specific things. And then we're going to talk about ways to keep you and your family safe. Now, according to Christopher Ray, the number one threat to the U.S. are domestic or homegrown terrorists. Uh, they're very hard to track. Um, a lot of times they can be a lone actor or they can be with small cell groups. Um, these groups typically are radicalized by online sources. Of course, there is a network of um, different type groups that are pouring out a lot of propaganda. And so people act on those a lot of times. Uh, one of the big things, though, is they're very hard to track. And because a, a lone actor, a lot of times, he keeps a low footprint online uh, keeping threats down. Uh, typically when he is uh, supporting a different group, he doesn't have any direct contact. And a lot of times these sales are the same. And, and they really try to keep things very low because that is what brings red flags up. They get online, they start making threats. It makes it really easy for you know investigators to be able to follow those people. Uh, they're trying to access weapons, uh, bomb making material. They get online and look up how to make bombs. Uh, and then, of course, looking for soft targets. And that's typically the, the biggest thing or areas where people can't defend themselves or there's a mass crowd. And so these people, again, are very difficult to follow. They're very difficult to catch. And so that's one of the biggest dangers. They're working on a number of different things to be able to help mitigate that type threat, uh, but it's going to be very difficult. And to them, that is the number one threat to the U.S. Number two is hostile foreign intelligence or operators. Uh, these are people that are here in the U.S. that actually have direct connections with different groups. And there are 22 training camps in the U.S. right now that are radicalized. Uh, we've known about those camps for a long time. Uh, there's been a lot of things that have prevented them from being prosecuted or to really be investigated. Uh, so now they're kind of ramping that up and trying to get in there. Again, they spent a good amount of time over the past few years just kind of laying low. So there hasn't been a lot of threats. So it lost its priority. Now they're picking it up and they're starting to really investigate these areas. These are typically state sponsored uh, and they have connections with all kind of different uh, radical groups or even radical nations such as Iran. And they're, they're getting funds and they're getting radicalized by different propaganda coming out of these organizations. Number three are national attacks, uh, and that's where you have a state-sponsored attack uh, that's actually physical. Uh, really, the biggest on that list would be Iran, uh, with the capabilities that they're putting together and their nuclear program that's really been sped up. Uh, they are probably the biggest threat as far as a national attack. And, and this could be missiles, it could be you know a bomb, it could be a lot of different things. Uh, and this is just to create terror. According to Christopher Ray, this seems to be the least likely of the three different type attacks, but it is still possible, and they're really watching this closely. And then there's the potential for cyber attacks. Uh, one of the things that a lot of these countries have become very tech savvy, and they're starting to uh, flex their muscle uh, in the cyber attack realm. Uh, and this can really hit infrastructure. It can hit government agencies. It can do a lot of different damage. Uh, just to cause disruption. And that's another one of the biggest threats out there. Now, when it comes to the different groups, uh, whether it's Al-Qaeda, 
uh, even the Taliban in Afghanistan. Of course, you have the Hezbollah, Hamas. Uh, you have the Houthi, which are out of Yemen, and a number of other different terrorist organizations all across the Middle East. One of the biggest problems is that they do not coordinate together. And so you could have something coming out of any of these groups, and it would be very difficult to be able to track as far as planning ahead. Uh, one of the things, though, that you need to be careful of, and I have to be careful as well, is you, know, you don't see an attack. You hear a lot of posturing. Of course, they talked about you know, that one Friday where they had the Day of Jihad. And they had a few stabbings and just a few things, but it really wasn't that much that really happened. But one of the things, even with the Hamas attack, it took years to plan. And one of the things about these groups is they're in for the long haul. They're willing to wait it out. They're willing to get prepared and to train and to be ready and then make a coordinated attack. Uh, just like what happened on 9-11. That didn't happen overnight. And so we may see a lot of small attacks where people are stabbed in the streets or things like that, but not necessarily a major coordinated attack that could happen over years of planning. But a lot of these groups are able to inspire those lone actors or those small sales that may be located in our country, and they may act. So the danger is always there. Now, what are the targets? Uh, typically, you know, we see a lot of street attacks. Uh, we have somebody that's kind of outspoken, uh, against these groups and, you know, somebody can be stabbed to death. We've seen that all across the world. Uh, of course, with bombs and explosives, it's more difficult to do here in the U.S. because there's more control over those substances. It's a little more difficult to get it into the country. And if they are trying to find some kind of explosives, uh, typically someone tips them off <laughs> because, you know, if they're online looking for ways to produce explosives or if they're even trying to get the material. A lot of times their uh, efforts are thwarted because people are reporting them. Houses of worship, big target, anywhere where there's mass public gatherings. And then sometimes even retail uh, locations and government institutions and buildings. These seem to be the areas where there is more of a potential for some sort of attack. Of course, these attacks are again cyber attacks, but they're also just attacks on the infrastructure. Uh, you know, water sources, uh, power stations, uh, different things like that that really keep our country moving. And to disrupt those really causes um, a big effect on the U.S. population. But there's also potential for chemical attacks or biological and even nuclear attacks. So guys, what can you do to stop these kind of attacks? Um, number one is if you see something, say something. Uh, one of the things on the FBI website is just to call 911. Uh, you can also contact the local FBI field office. Uh, and then when you go online to the FBI, you can actually report it there online. Uh, it's really important also to contact your local government as well because they're going to be very responsive. And then they can contact the FBI. Also, Homeland Security. They have numbers and a different process that you go through to report different situations. And so really, it's important to report situations that you see that are highly suspicious. If something just doesn't look right, it's important that you say something. Uh, it may not be anything, but it's better to be safe. But also, situational awareness, that's a big one. Seeing what's going on around you, uh, when you go into any kind of event, let's say a restaurant, you sit with your back to the wall facing the front door. Uh, you look and see where your exits are. You make sure that you look for cover or concealment. Cover is where you can be ballistically protected in case people are shooting. Uh, when it comes to concealment, that's just hiding behind something, and that can be used as well. If you have a concealed carry permit or you live in a constitutional carry state, carry. Carry it with you at all times. Uh, this is a very important element. A lot of people have concealed carry permits, and they don't carry. I was talking to a guy the other night. We had dinner with he and his wife. And they both have had concealed carry permits for 10 years, and they've never carried. Having a concealed carry can stop a really bad situation. And not just for you and your family. It can stop another situation from getting out of hand. And so, guys, you have the Second Amendment. We have a right for concealed carry. Use it. Make sure that you carry your gun wherever you're going. And obviously, having some kind of trauma kit or medical supplies handy, a nice flashlight, and a knife. And that just gives you a little bit of an edge in case you find yourself in a really bad situation. But again, monitoring the area around you. If you see something, 
take notice of it. If there's a disruption going on, even in a public place, take note of it. Get you and your family out of the way. And guys, we've done some videos recently on this subject, and so I just invite you to check those out. Uh, it'll just help you to be better prepared. Uh, let's face it, guys, we live in some really tumultuous times right now. There's a lot of things going on, and you need to be ready to face those situations to protect yourself and your family, but also to protect others. And so really, that's the big thing about if you see something, you really need to say something. One of the other mottos is pledge to protect. And we live here in this country, and we want to protect our way of life, our family, our friends. And it's one of the best ways to do it because, guys, we obviously have a lot of threats right now that are coming down the pipe, and we need to be ready. Be strong. Be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. Uh, there were a number of different threats that we're not necessarily going to just talk about because we just don't really have time for all that crap. <laughs> uh, up to 2,700 investigations. Is that right? Yes, yeah, right. And I missed it. Dang it. Uh, they monitor the different activity that's going on and potential threats that could happen here in the U.S. Now the number one threat on the list, okay, now the number one terrorist threat on the list are homegrown or domestic fudge. The director of the FBI, Christopher Wray, had just met, had just met, had just met. Today we're gonna to talk about the number one threat to the U.S. at this point. Uh, according to FBI director, um, what's his name? Christopher Wray. 